This week, I was scrolling through the new Woo.com and I came across this section that caught my eye. Not only is it a cool way to show off different images, but I really like the way it works as kind of a break in between different sections. So of course, when I found this, I did what any good web developer would do, and I dropped all my client work to focus solely on this so I could bring you today's tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a section just like this, manipulate the number of images inside of it, and make it automatically responsive so that it stays proportionate no matter what device size you're on. We're gonna do all of this inside the Generate Blocks editor without having to write a single line of CSS. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in learning, stick around and let's get started. So I've already gone ahead and uploaded some of these images we're gonna to need to our image library. So all we need to do now is go in here to pages and add new to get started. We'll just go ahead and call this page woo. And the first thing I'm gonna drop in here is a container block. So we'll type in the word container and get that added. Now, typically on most sections, you're gonna to wanna to add an inner container here, but we're actually gonna have this section completely full width with some overflow. So we're not gonna to wanna to add the default inner container here. Now we are gonna need some wrappers inside of it. So just for organization purposes, I'm gonna go down here to advance and I'm gonna make sure I label everything inside of here so it makes it really clear for the demonstration. Here inside the block label, I'll just call this our section. And in fact, while we're here, we'll go ahead and change this tag to section as well. Now to give us just a little bit of space, I'm gonna give the top and bottom of this section a little bit of padding and that will just push it away from our header and footer. Now inside this section, we're gonna go ahead and add our first container. This is actually gonna act as the wrapper for the first row of our images. So to make that clear, we'll just change this block label to wrapper and we can call it row one just to be extremely explicit. Now inside of this wrapper in this first row, we're gonna have four images spanning across. Now we don't wanna just drop in four images because we're not gonna have all the flex controls we need. We actually need to wrap each one of those images in its own container. So here we'll just go to add block. We'll add a new container. This is inside of our wrapper row one. And we're just gonna call this image wrapper. Now you don't have to mark all these inside your block labels, but for demonstration purposes here, I just think it's gonna be easier for you to know exactly what I'm talking about. All right. So inside this image wrapper, we can go ahead and add our first image, we'll go to our media library, and we'll add this first one in here. So to get four of these across the first row, I'm just gonna grab this first image wrapper, and I'm gonna press Shift Command D three times to give us four of these images. Now you'll see by default, this is just stacking them on top of each other, but we can fix that by going to our wrapper row one and changing the display from default to flex. This will stick all of these in a line next to each other, which is more of the look we're going for. Now, of course, we still are gonna to have to make some changes here. So let's talk about what needs to come next. We're gonna to wanna to set this flex wrap to no wrap. By default, it's not gonna wrap anyways, but we wanna be explicit that these images should never wrap to another line. We're gonna do that manually with a entirely different wrapper row. We're also gonna to wanna to justify this content in the center, which is gonna help us with the offset and alignment, which you'll see later inside this demonstration. Lastly, we're gonna to wanna to set some kind of gap in between these images. So right now they're all butted up next to each other, but let's go ahead and just give them 24 pixels of gap in between them for the time being. So, so far this is looking pretty good, except you can see that all of these images are staying within the container on our page and we actually want it to overflow. By default, things are gonna try to fit inside of each other, so we kinda have to work against some of those rules to make this work. Now there are a few different ways to attack this, but what I've decided to show you inside this demo is probably the path of least resistance. The only thing I don't like about it is we are gonna have to use a bit of a magic number here to make all this work, and if we change the number of images, then we have to go back and change our magic number. But if you're just setting up some kind of static section on your site, I don't really think that's a huge deal. And we're able to do all of this here inside the editor, which is kind of my main priority. So what I'm gonna do is grab all four of these image wrappers, and we're gonna scroll down here to our sizing box. Now, I don't use minimum width too often because this can cause overflow issues, but here that's exactly what we want. So for our minimum width, I'm gonna change this four column section to 40%. And this is gonna make the images take up 40% of the available space inside of their parent. So now you can see this is actually causing the first image and the last image to overflow. Now it is doing the first and last image because we set this justify content on the wrapper to center 
if it was on left still, you could see everything would just overflow to the right. But we want everything to be centered here, so this is actually working perfectly. Now let's go ahead and publish this and take a look on the front end because we do still have some issues here. On the front end, you can see everything looks fine, but as we zoom out, we can see here that these images are actually overflowing the bounds of my website. Now, because of the way I have some things set up in my starter site, we're not ending up with any kind of horizontal scroll, but on most sites, you probably are gonna have a horizontal scroll bar here, which is definitely not what we're after. Thankfully, fixing this is actually pretty simple. I'm gonna go back into the editor here and we'll grab our section. And here under the layout tab, we're gonna to wanna to change the overflow X from default to hidden. Now, if we go ahead and update on this and refresh on the front end, when we zoom out, you can see the images are actually being cut off by this section, which is exactly what we want. So we're getting close to the overall layout here, but we wanna get our next row in here. Before we do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly swap out these images so we're not looking at the same picture of LeBron repeated over and over again. All right, now that we got these four images across here set up, let's go ahead and collapse this wrapper row one and we'll hit Command Shift D to duplicate it. Now I'm gonna go in here to our advanced and we're gonna change this wrapper row one to wrapper row two so we can tell the difference between them here inside our list view. Again, let's just go ahead and replace these images. So I'm gonna grab the next three from our media library and since this row is only gonna have three images, we can go to our last image wrapper here and just delete it. Now you can see because we have our center alignment here, this is automatically doing the kind of stacking we want where there's an offset. We see four images here and three images here, except we don't have a gap in between these. To fix that, I'm gonna go back to our section here and change the layout from the default of block to flex. Now, by default, this is gonna stick these next to each other, but we can fix that by changing the direction from row to column, which will stack them back on top of each other. And now we have the ability to add a row gap between these. So I'm gonna go ahead and add 24 pixels, just like we have in between our images here, which will give us a consistent gap on all of this. So let's go ahead and hit update, and we'll refresh on the front end to see what it looks like. Now, this is the exact look we were going for here but you might decide these images are too big and maybe you'd want five images across the top and four across the bottom. Well, that's actually really simple to do, except we're gonna have to mess with our magic number. I'm gonna go back in here to our row wrapper one and we'll collapse all these image wrappers so we can easily duplicate this last image wrapper to give us five on the top line. So I'm gonna click here and duplicate. And inside this last wrapper, I'm gonna go ahead and replace this image to the next image from our media library. Now, the problem is, because we've set all these to take up 40% of the space, it doesn't matter how many we add, we're not gonna see any more inside the viewport. So here, we're gonna need to select all of our image wrappers and change that 40% width. Now, like I said, this is a little magic number -y, which is one reason I don't absolutely love this system, but chances are you're setting this up one time and it's gonna stay static for its entire existence. So I don't think it's a total deal breaker. I'm gonna change this from 40% to 25%. When we do that, it doesn't render perfectly here in the back end, but if we go ahead to our wrapper row two, duplicate that last wrapper, replace the image inside of it, and change each one of these wrappers to also follow the 25% max width, we can see now we're actually seeing five images across the top and four across the bottom. We'll go ahead and hit update and refresh it on the front end and this actually looks quite a bit better because now we're not taking up so much vertical space. However, we're not quite done yet. As we go into responsive view, you'll see that there's still a few little issues. So here on desktop, the space in between these images looks pretty good, but as we get smaller and smaller, you can see the images are shrinking because they're responding to the available width, but the gap, since it's a hard coded pixel value, is not changing. This actually messes with the proportions quite a bit. Now with the images really small, it looks like the gap between them is huge. Whereas on desktop, the gap looked a lot more proportionate. So we're gonna need to go back and fix that. Now, one way you might wanna fix that is change this hard pixel value to a clamp value, but we would have to leave here and go find a clamp calculator to do it. And I think there's actually an easier way. I'm gonna go here into my two wrappers 
And instead of this 24 pixels of column gap, I'm gonna change this to 1.5 VW. So I just typed a VW in here and it automatically changed this unit to a VW unit. So VW stands for viewport width. So it's essentially 1.5% of the viewport width. What this is gonna do is actually scale the size of this gap based on how wide the screen is. Using VW for spacing isn't always ideal, but in this situation, I actually think it works pretty well. The last thing we need to do is just go into our section here and change this 24 pixels to match. So we'll do 1.5 VW and we can go ahead and hit update. Now on the front end, we'll refresh and we'll jump back into the inspector here so we can play with the width of the website. You remember before there was a big gap in between these when we got to smaller sizes, but you'll see now the gap is actually shrinking proportionately as we make the window much smaller. To me, this is a much better look and a really easy way to solve this problem. But I think there's one thing we can do to make this actually look better. I do like the five images and four images here on desktop, and it looks pretty good on tablet as well. But as we get to mobile, I actually think these images are too small. I don't think they'd be completely legible to somebody viewing this on their phone. So let's talk about how we can change this to show four images and three images just when we get down to mobile. Go ahead and go back in here to the editor, and I'm gonna open up each one of these wrappers. For our last image wrapper in the first row, I'm gonna scroll down here to advanced, and under the advanced column, we're gonna change this image wrapper to be hide on mobile. This will simply hide this last wrapper on mobile devices. We're gonna to need to do the same thing for the last image on the second row, so we'll click on it, we'll go under advanced, and we'll also hide it on mobile. Now, we do have to fix our magic number here, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab all four of these images, and on the mobile setting here, I'm gonna scroll down and change this minimum width back to 40%, which is what we had before when we were going for that four and three column look. We'll go back here to our first row, grab all of these images, and change this from 25 back to 40%. Now, you do wanna make sure you're doing this on the mobile view only so we don't affect tablet and desktop. Now we can go ahead and save this. We'll go back to the front end here and start with our desktop view and refresh it. So here you can see we have the five images running across the top row and four images across the bottom row. The same is gonna be true for the tablet version. But as we get in here to our mobile breakpoint, you can see this is now switched to four and three. And for a typical mobile device, I think the proportions of this actually looks pretty accurate to what we had on desktop. So as you can see, it's really easy to manipulate this at your different breakpoints, and we never had to go write any custom CSS to make this happen. Hopefully you learned a new trick inside this tutorial. As I've said a million times, I love scrolling different websites, finding inspiration on things I haven't tried before, and then figuring out how to do it here inside of Generate Press and Generate Blocks. If you come across any sections that you'd like me to try to tackle here in a future video, please leave them down in the comments below and I will see if I can get that added to my list. If you wanna check out any of the past tricks I've done inside of Generate Press and Generate Blocks, you can click either of the videos here. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you wanna make sure to catch my next one, go ahead and hit subscribe and we'll see you then.